I set myself a challenge. You all sent me Pokedex entries and I had to create Pokemon based on those entries. All the while using my hyper intelligent monkey brain to guess what Pokemon the actual entries was for. You all somehow really goofed me up with these ones, but dang did I have fun streaming all of these. I'm not gonna even beat around the bush, let's just get started with the first description. If you're playing at home, tell me how many you guessed and don't forget to like and subscribe. Now with that YouTuber intro done, let's go. Our first entry was it crawls along sluggishly, the swirly protrusions on its back is filled with its brain and other organs. I used a reference for an actual Australian animal for this one, the Attenborough snail, named after Sir David Attenborough himself, found in Tasmania. It's a cool, colourful snail without a shell and I found that perfect for our first one because honestly it just screams snail to me. And I love the idea of this shellless snail creature because in the dex entry it says that it doesn't have a shell, just a swirly protrusion. They really should cover that swirly protrusion up. So I wanted this big nasty snail creature, a bit of a Wo Chien moment, but this would be based on one of those snails that are being controlled by a weird wacky parasite. Giving a sort of zombie feel to it, and thanks to that parasite all the organs are smooshed up to the back of it big nasty brain pushing out as well. Originally I didn't want to give it legs and uh, although I like the legless look I love the idea of it doing the squid with sucker walk with all of its legs and still looking dazed like a zombie. I ended up making the back part bigger to just show how much this Pokemon's body and other organs are just large and just smushed out. Colours were rather basic as I just kept them pretty much close to the actual animal's colours. As nasty as our snail friend is, it does indeed look pretty friendly and huggable, a bit like how the actual Pokemon from the description looks. Hmm. Paraslime, the parasite Pokemon, a bug and ghost type. When Paraslime are born, they are instantly infected with a parasite from their parents. It is entirely focused on creating more paraslime. Because of this, paraslime aren't very interesting or intelligent. Due to the size of the parasite, the organs of Paraslime are pushed into the back of their body, and their large, unused brain sits at the top as a gruesome reminder of the Pokémon's potential. Scientists have tried to keep Paraslime from being infected, but due to the powerful pheromones the infected give off, not infected Paraslime will stop at nothing to find their way towards their fate. Paraslime has a new ability called Parasitic Touch, where contact with this Pokémon transfers and replaces the foe's ability with Parasitic Touch, a bit like with the mummy ability. Alright, so I'm gonna just jump straight to the stream reaction here for all these parts. Is the Pokemon that this, uh, this Pokedex entry based on, is it actually, um, Sligoo? Uh, specifically regular Sligoo? Yep. Okay, cool. Oh, is it Hisuian Sligoo or normal Sligoo? Uh, Sligoo. Okay, normal Sligoo. Cool. Yay, I was right. And that's right, it was Sligoo. I kinda guessed as there aren't many Pokemon with a swirly protrusion on their back that isn't disconnected to their actual body or is just a shell. For our next entry, it was... It has trouble drawing a line between friends and food. It will calmly try to melt and eat, even those it gets along well with. Immediately my thoughts went to some kind of gourmand Pokemon. For the actual design, I was subconsciously inspired by the food lava area in Rayman Origins, especially those red dragons from it. I wanted to make some fun dragon Pokemon where the idea of the melting part would come from their lava-like saliva, almost like a cheese fondue. The fondue leaks down and forms a lizard-like tongue and even a cheesy bib. I guess saying cheese isn't exactly right. This is literal molten saliva we're talking about. Gross. But he's a happy, chonky lad. During the stream, the chat had some great names for it, but we decided on Melty Melty due to it feeling a bit like a Licky Licky Mon. Maybe not an Evo, maybe a very disconnected Convergent. Because he's all about being a Master Chef and Fondue Master, he has a molten Fondue Fork tail and a constant plume of smoke coming from his head like a chef's hat. And even some grill marks, so maybe he is the grill. This Pokemon can do it all, huh? I can just see this funky little lad waddling along and using their signature move, which we shall see soon. Melty Melty, the fondue Pokemon of fire and dragon type. 
Melty Melty are true gourmands, they will eat anything scorching it the moment it touches their sticky, gooey saliva. Due to the heat that their bodies run at, Melty Melty live in volcanic areas or any place where it's as hot as they are. Forests become uncontrollable wildfires while Melty Melty are around. If it hungers for a Pokemon, Melty Melty will use its saliva like a net, spitting it out at long distances. The saliva sticks the prey to the ground as well as causing severe burns. Melty Melty will then proceed to swallow the prey whole while cooking them as Melty Melty swallows. Melty Melty have the abilities Flame Body and Gooey. And I think for this one you should definitely see my reaction. Onto the Dex entry. Who is this? So... I, I have a singular guess. Is it... Uh, what's his name? Is it Swalot? I feel like it's wrong, but is it Swalot? Is it actually Sligu? Is it actually Sligu again? Are you kidding me? Is it- Oh my god, it's Sligu again! What? That's hilarious! Yeah, that's right, I got Sligu twice. Twice! Surprisingly, this was on me though, as I randomly picked from the group, but still... Twice! Sligu twice! Melty Melty also has its own move in Fondoom. A special fire type attack with 60 base power, 90 accuracy and 10 power points. The user spits up gooey molten saliva upon the enemy. This attack has a chance to have any of these effects occur in any combination. The Pokemon's speed is lowered by one stage, the Pokemon can no longer be switched out next turn, or the Pokemon is inflicted with a burn. Next, let's get a bit spooky in here. From the hollows in its arms, it fires the bones of its victims, which are all dried up after being drained of their vitality. This one was dark, I couldn't believe how messed up it was. But I thought of some kind of forest creature like a Trevenant type of Pokemon. Again, I may have had some subconscious design inspirations from Leshy from Inscription in the way I made this. I wanted this big skeletal-like tree that would look like a decrepit old man at the same time, but also just have massive cannon arms, just like every grandpa should have. The fact that it said the hollows of its arms definitely pushed me towards the design inspiration. This actually has very lethal company forest keeper vibes to it, but this tree man would slowly trudge around the forest, and honestly, I can't imagine this grandpa in game as it's almost too creepy. Maybe it'd be some kind of creepy legendary Pokemon encounter deep in a misty forest. This Pokemon would definitely learn a bunch of draining moves and maybe something like Bone Meringue just for the stand-in for firing out the bones of its victims. Ugh, <laughs> nasty. Colors for this one was pretty straightforward, it needed to be tree colors for that natural camo. So you just can't see Grandpa until he can surprise you. Oh creep. The Forest Revenant Pokemon are grass and ghost type. In forests where tragedy once occurred, an Oakreep will rise and become both a vengeful spirit and caretaker to the forest. It eerily dragged itself through the forest, their large arms creating trenches wherever they walk. These trenches actually sprout beautiful flowers. The more souls Oakreep devours, the more beautiful the flowers that grow. The hollows of their arms can both absorb the life essence of foes, but also suck in the trespassers' entire bodies. Once inside, they are reduced to nothing but bones, which Oakreep can use as projectiles against other enemies. It is a walking, natural weapon. Oakreep has a new ability called Dry Out, where this Pokemon's physical contact attacks have a chance to drop the foe's speed. Here's my stream reaction on what the actual Pokemon is as well. Is this Pokemon Cacturn? No? Oh dang. It's not Cacturn. My only other my only second guess was Trevenant. Oh <gasps> it's Palisand? Ew! Palisand, you're nasty! You're dirty! Yep. Palisand, isn't that weird? I knew it was nasty, but not that freaky. On to the next entry. This Pokemon is said to devour anyone daring to ravage the forest. Though the creatures dwelling in the forest, it offers great kindness. This one ended up also looking a bit like a cousin to an existing Pokemon in Carnivine. I thought the whole devour thing and being both kind of aggressive made me think of something close to like a Drampa or the like, so I combined it all together. 
A large Venus flytrap like dragon that is aggressive and scary but also sweet and even going so far as to have a bush of berries growing upon them. It's got a bit of a tropia thing going on but this one is a bit scarier being a grass and dragon type. A slight inspo from dragon fruit here for the obvious joke but I do also try to fully incorporate it into the design but it ended up looking a little over the top goofy for our Pokemon here. During the colouring I did add those little black spots from the dragon fruit to the white heads to make that connection but yeah a bit much for it I think. It works well enough with the bright white face. Looks a bit like the grass grandpa drampa. Friendly but also looks like it could cause a bit of elderly chaos. Carnadine, the forest protector Pokemon, a grass and dragon type. Sighting a Carnadine is quite difficult. They choose to not appear to most while protecting the forest they dwell in, choosing to watch silently till the trespasser shows their true nature. Their large mouths are capable of swallowing enemies whole. Even massive Pokemon struggle against the jaws of Carnadine. To kind people in Pokemon, Carnadine provide nourishing berries and fruits that grow upon their body. This Pokemon seems to be related to Carnivine in their appearance and nature, but Carnadine slowly trudges with their developed legs instead of floating about like Carnivine. Carnadine have the ability Strong Jaw and Harvest. You'll be quite surprised what I guess for this one. Yeah, I'm embarrassed. Alright, so my initial idea, okay, because it's also funny that this was kind of the concept. Is it Carnivine? Did I unintentionally make a Carnivine almost looking Pokemon and it is Carnivine? <laughs> it's Trevenant. I did the Pokemon that looks like Trevenant in the previous one. And then this one's Trevenant. Oh my god. Why do I suck at this? <laughs> and here's the next horrifying entry. It has a vicious temperament. Contrary to what its appearance may suggest, it wraps its long bodies around prey, then drags the prey into its den. This one was quite difficult, and even still I feel like I didn't get exactly the right idea from it. It says long bodies, but clearly I tried to make some kind of funky cotton radish hydra with long necks instead. But you know, what they can't all be bangers. I wanted this weird radish creature with two different heads to show off their contrary nature. One head, a happy goofball that's actually a monster, and the grumpy head, which is just kind of chill. Maybe grumpy because it doesn't like what the happy head does. Then all the other weird Hydra mini heads are all goofy and, well, down to just grab and drag whatever they want to feast on in their den. Why I fought Dragon for this one was the whole idea of dragging prey into its den made me think of some kind of dragon horde den or something of the like. But this big puffball is just in there. You get dragged in there thinking, oh, what a cute little creature, only to be viciously attacked. The idea of it being almost like a radish helps with our typing as well. It's got that nice, pleasing color shift like a radish too. Ah, a daikon radish, I should mention, not the bright red or pinky one. Chondraton, the many heads Pokemon, a grass and dragon type. Due to their large size, it would be sensible to think Chondraton were dangerous predators. But in actual fact, Chondraton are skittish and shy, usually living in dens where they drag foes in with their many smaller heads like tendrils. Each head has a separate brain with the two larger heads sporting well-developed brains, while each smaller one only having one tenth of the power. If one of the smaller heads gets damaged or cut off, it will quickly regenerate, especially in bright sunlight. The goofy happy head is actually much more aggressive than the grumpy head, and it will use this to throw their opponent off guard. Chondraton have the abilities a Regenerator and Effect Spore. I got this one right finally, only because I played Skull and Violent very recently and saw its entry though. I, kn I know for sure this thing is not Farret. My, my first guess, and I think this is what it is, is it Wugtrio? <gasps> yeah, it, it's real. Yes! Finally! I've broken the curse of... Sliggers! Ah, oh, I like to thank my mother and my father. They got me here. For our next entry, I got the pollen it releases contains poison. If the Pokemon is raised on clean water, the poison's toxicity is increased. This one could have definitely been another grass type Pokemon, but the pollen idea made me think of Pollen Puff, 
So I went towards a bug and the clean water made me think of a specific type of bug. A water bug, those horrifying looking things. Those fun little lads from Animal Crossing. Uh, remember the good old days playing Animal Crossing yeah, in isolation on the, the bad thoughts. Thinking about it being raised on clean water made me think of some sassy, haughty water bug Pokemon that maybe is all about being fashion. Well, I guess fashion built into it. It sports a big hat like lily pad with a beautiful flower where it would release a poison as well as a polony puff shawl that trails off into its wings that look like a scarf instead. Can you not just see this thing strutting on top of the water like Suicune on a catwalk? Because I can. Very much a Theramosa or a Serena-like design. Take that as you will, though. I think this design turned out really nicely. Probably the last of a free-stage evolution line for sure. Would be all about kicking and slapping attacks too. The name Iliacol comes from the scientific name for waterbugs as well as Illy. You know how the kids used to say it. As well as shawl, like a type of clothing. Listen, I don't do fashion. My main outfit are workout shorts and the same t-shirts washed and worn in constant cycles. Iliacol, the water bug Pokemon, a bug and water type. Ilya Call are quite haughty Pokemon, believing they deserve everything handed to them without effort. Despite this, they still have the ability to hunt with great efficiency. Disguised as a flowering lily pad, it lies just under the water, floating along till prey flies just above Ilya Call. It will then launch itself out of the water with unnatural speed and hit their foes with a powerful kick or chop to fell the foe in one blow. When not hunting, it prances around its territory and forces other Pokemon to admire it or provide it with offerings. It is truly the height of luxury for a Pokemon. Iliacol have the ability Dazzling and Swift Swim. I got this one wrong again, just, just watch. My first guess, is it Vileplume? No, it's, no, it's not Budgie, is it? <laughs> no, no, you, you, you can't do this to me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, it's Budju. Uh. Our final entry of this video is... It travels by riding on winds. It cleverly uses its long tail to pluck nuts and berries, which it loves to eat. I'll be honest with this one. There was only so many Pokemon it could have been, and I started drawing a Pokemon that felt very similar in design. My idea was almost this sort of combination between a Molga and Ipom. I wanted to have inspo come from these adorable fluffy flying squirrels, but instead it likes to pluck nuts and berries with that massive hand tail, so obviously it needed to be a bit of a more crafty and evil squirrel, just to peek into my messed up mind. I had trouble trying to figure out what I wanted for the body, but I kept it flat on to show it's flying, carrying its little payload of berries to eat, or maybe pelt at the enemy if needed. But it doesn't really want to. It was brought to my attention that it did look a bit like those fur raccoon hats, which I only really see now, but I guess it would work pretty well on your head. The big hand could even be used as a furred hand for you. Oh my, the uses for this Pokemon just never end. Yeah, here's Plundle, the naughty lad. Plundle, the flying thief Pokemon, a dark and flying type. Plundle fly through forests at high speeds, using their speed and dexterity from their large tail to pluck berries and nuts from the trees themselves as well as Pokemon greedily stealing anything within their grasp. Its light body and fluffy coat help take the impact of trees and other obstacles if it rams into them. With a swift blundle, it can grab onto tree branches and swing around them, and change directions instantly, making it difficult to catch them. Trainers who own Plundle will have to keep a close eye on them, as the trainer may find themselves hordes of items and stolen goods stashed away by Plundle. Plundle have the abilities Pickpocket and Frisk, You'll be shocked at how it went for the guesses here. I've got two guesses. One of them makes sense and the other one not as much, but it seems like it might be. <laughs> I'm gonna cheat and have two guesses. The first one is Amolga, and the second one is it Chimeco maybe? Oh, what? Oh, it is Chimeco? Alright, so I'm gonna say I was wrong, because I did technically guess Amolga first. And that's all I have for this video. What did you think? 
I had a lot of fun streaming this, so expect it to come back again with more streams. There are thousands of Pokedex entries and many Pokemon to create with it, so again, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and a sub and share this video around. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Children, please send me your bones. I need them much more than you do right now.